Let's take an example and look at how these different levels of consciousness relate to the attentional process, let's say in reading. So, child, you have a child in a book. What does it take for reading to happen? The child sees the book. That's not reading. They see the book. They see black and white on the page, ink and, and paper. That's not reading. But it's an awareness of this thing we call a book and the print, the ink on the paper in the book, in the child's visual field, within their environment. So they see it. That's the first question. Do they see it? Do they see the book? Do they see the black and white, the contrast, the ink and the paper? Next question is, are they paying attention to it? Are they looking? Seeing and looking are two different things. So it's first the seeing, do they see it? Now, where are they looking? What's the, this involves motor skills of the fine motor of the eye muscles to coordinate two eyes within one, less than one degree of arc of, of angle and space, the finest physical motor coordination required for any function in the whole body. And it has to, to see clearly, to focus, focus the, we talk about focusing attention, there's focusing of vision, and they're related, to focus on that contrasting black and white ink on paper requires the parasympathetic nervous system regulation of the ciliary muscle, a smooth muscle like the muscles of digestion, sensitive to the same kinds of stresses, stress of any kind, pressure and demands and chemistry and lighting and distraction, any kind of stresses will tend to, to block that function, then they have to focus harder to get it clear, uh, maybe get a headache, maybe get a stomach ache. Children will get stomach aches only on school days and not on the weekend when they have a focusing issue with the eye. So now they're attending to the print, to the ink on the, on the page, the figure on the ground, the center and the periphery. Are they oriented to both the periphery and the center at the same time? Or do they lose their place? Do they have to use their finger or, or a hand or a ruler to, to block the lines below to keep their place? That tells us they're losing their periphery, their awareness. That's crucial. If you're at the end of a line of print, to find the beginning of the next line and got, not get on the wrong line, not skip a line, not reread the same line, you've got to have this good peripheral awareness, good spatial awareness, at the same time as using the central detailed vision of looking and, and focusing to discern the details of not only, you know, where am I and what's around me, what's where my awareness of me and my environment, but also the details now of, of the relationship between objects and space and the fine, finer details of those objects. So, and that's still not even reading. That's just looking. Are they looking at the words? Are they looking at the page? So they look, can they see the, the difference from one word to the next? There's a small space between one word and the next, and we call those words. And then within one word, there's letters, and there's small spaces between those letters. There's a space between the letters, a space between the words. Oh, but there's a different size space. So, and that all has symbolic meaning. Each letter has a symbolic meaning to, to us when we're reading. And the letters together have another layer of meaning that's a symbolic meaning that we call word. And that word has a meaning that's the, the, uh, you know, the, the definition, that meaning of that word, the imagery associated, the memories, the connections of what that word is associated with. So it's a symbol sound association. So we're seeing it in our mind's ear. We may be hearing the word. Some, some readers sub-vocalize, they hear the word. Some just read visually. If you're sub-vocalizing, that's the speed of sound. But if you're just reading visually and you don't need the sub-vocal, if, if you're able to visualize without that and get the meaning without that directly from the vision, that can allow for speeder, a speedier reading. Uh, so, so there's many subtleties to the process of attention and now we're, we've only gotten to the point where now we can start talking about meaning the meaning of the word and then if, if you're having to focus intensely to get the meaning of a word you lose some ground, you lose some awareness in space some awareness of self, some centeredness of that coherence between the, the breath and the heart and, and the brain, which we didn't really talk about, but the muscles in the brain operate at a 10 hertz cycle. So you can see there's a, a tenfold factor of, of frequency of stepping, 
uh, up to higher frequencies from the breath at 0.1 hertz to the heart at 1 hertz to the, the, the brain and the muscles. And the brain is a, is a muscle. It's a, it's a subtle movement in the brain, and we can measure it in the muscles of the body when we're thinking about any kind of movement, including speech movement in, in, uh, in, in language and reading. And so that's at 10 hertz at the alpha rhythm is the, the center of the spectrum. So there's relationships in frequency and energy. There's a dynamic between these different systems and how each one plays into the next one at a higher level of organization. From the bits of qualia of sensation to the, the relationship of one set sensation and another that we can center on one and be aware of another one as the figure in ground. My speech is the figure. The ground is the sound of the birds, the sound of the airplane, uh, the sound of a chime on the front porch. So, uh, so that's just decoding the meaning, getting the meaning of each word. And now, but now we've got to string those words into a sentence to get the next order of level of, of meaning, to integrate that. And so that's going to be in the, the earth element, just like we take, we take apart, you know, we take apart in our environment into pieces and label them as that's, that's a word and that's a word and that's a word, and, we, and maybe there's commas and phrasing. We separate with the, with the, with the breath, the phrasing of the, of the sentence, separate one sentence from another with some space visually and in time, temporally with sound. So there's all these relationships, but it's also language is a linear process. It's one letter after another. If I take them out of sequence, if I reverse letters, a B becomes a D. If I reverse the sequence of things, the, the words lose some of their meaning, their contextual meaning of the flow of, of the sequence of the language. So uh, what I was saying is in the earth element, yeah, the background sound, so you lose some focus, some attention on my voice because there's this other sound that comes in. This is a good illustration. Uh, so the earth element, our digestion, breaks down the food that we take from our environment and breaks it down into little pieces. Like Those are like the words, the meanings, the symbols, the letters, the words, the pieces of meaning, even the sentences. But we build them back up into the sentence structure and the, the syntax, the the different uh, structure of our bodies is different than the environment, but using the same building blocks, the same quality of the same ink and paper, the same contrast of color and form and movement is how we rebuild up our, our consciousness, our thoughts, our thinking. So when we're reading, we're building up that, those sentences into meaningful images and pictures and patterns of, of memory and movement and visualization and sound patterns. And so it's like, just like digestion, which is this related energetic process where we're breaking down a protein from a food, we break down into amino acids or into, those would be like letters or like into tripeptides, which would be like words. And then we, our body takes those and rebuilds them into our own enzymes, our own protein structures for our body shape and structure and function and 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 so we build these linear structures DNA is a linear structure RNA and enzymes and other structural proteins all coded for by linear sentences in a sense that have a certain meaning so there's a certain symbol a certain representation and a, and a meaning that that codes for and we go we, we take them apart and we put them together we code it we decode it so this is happening on a consciousness level as well as on the physical level. And we need all the building blocks. We need all the enzymes and catalysts to work properly. We need to be free of interference with stresses and division of our attention and, and toxins that block pathways. And so it's, it's a big picture that we need to put together to correct those issues with attention. <clears throat>